Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. Today we're going to talk about the Canon R5 Mark II, what makes it different than the regular R5, and a couple of things that are extremely important and not too many people talk about that makes it an awesome camera for today's either still or video photography. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the pre-continuous shooting. This is a feature that most people that do a lot of professional video know a lot about, but most of us that do video here and there and mostly still don't know much about. Pre-continuous shooting is when the camera is continuously shooting, always like a loop. So in this case, it's a half a second loop, so the camera is always recording, whether it's still photos or videos. And as soon as you press the shutter, you're gonna actually not only record where you started shooting, but also the half a second before that. And this is very crucial, let's say you're shooting a bird flying, and we often just miss it. So this is gonna let you actually get that half a second before, and get that little flight before you actually uh, even started shooting and you're gonna get a lot more keepers. You're gonna be able to sh get basically have uh, way more uh, opportunities to basically get those uh, birds in flight or whatever, maybe some sort of a sports action that happened and uh, you were let's just at half a second late to actually push that shutter. But keep in mind with that feature, that means every time you actually record something, you're gonna have an extra half a second of either video footage or still footage. And that's gonna increase the file size. But in today's world, file size is not that critical as much as really getting those scenes or those shots. The so second thing which is really equally important is the introduction of a new sensor. It's exactly the same 45 megapixel, but this one is stacked sensor and it has much faster readout with the DigiX uh, basically processor and accelerator, which eliminated the rolling shutter issues. And that's a very big thing because now you can actually use electronic shutter and not have to worry about having those distorted images. And with that, it makes the uh, continuous pre-shooting feature actually accessible because that also works on the electronic shutter. So now you can have also pre-rolls of actually stills. So these two together are extremely uh, important and work well together, which makes this new camera much better than its predecessor, the regular Mark V. The dynamic range on this camera, they claim to be half a stop better, but to be honest with you, I could not see that anywhere. And if you really want dynamic range, I highly recommend you see my video where I talked about the Fuji GFX. Uh, and this is a camera where it actually, I would say, one of the kings in the dynamic range. And I, I showed some example between the R5 and the GFX and what the whole world of difference is the dynamic range. Now the image quality between the two cameras are exactly pretty much the same, so there are no real advantages. Uh, some say the ISO on the uh, R5 Mark II on very high low dark scenes you might get slightly more noise, uh, but there's a quite a debatable issue and it's, uh, I've tried it and I don't seem to see actually a big difference there, so I'm not too concerned about it. And often you really wanna, I mean, most time we try to avoid those extreme scenes anyways. Now on lower ISOs, like 100 up to 4, 500, the camera may seem to have a slightly better image quality, but again, it's also debatable. I would say they're pretty much the same. Now back to the electronic shutters, I forgot to mention that it's actually, now it's capable of doing 30 frames per second versus 20 frames per second. And another big one is the autofocus. The autofocus on the R5 Mark II, it's much more intelligent. It has some uh, really smart feature where it can actually predict where, for example, the ball, which player is gonna be carrying the ball next, where things are gonna be going. It has a much smarter way and it's probably one of the best autofocus you can actually have on a camera today. And that works well for both video and still. If we compare the regular Mark V to the Mark II, the regular appearance is the overall appearance is pretty much the same. 
on top you'll see that the power button has been relocated and the switching between video and still is introduced and positioned in its place. On the back you'll see that the viewfinder is slightly bigger to allow for the eye control and then there's some vents on the bottom and the side to cool the sensor. This camera is capable of shooting at 8K 60 frames per second instead of Surrey and it will not overheat. If you are using, for example, a C400 video camera or other different cameras, you will be able to shoot in the same type of log that basically at the end, if you're doing a B or A roll, it all looks the same between two cameras. Now, if we are going to talk about some of the negatives, I would say probably the uh, the fact that we don't have two different card slots that are the same, so we always have to uh, use one and the other and they're not the exact same speed and also the new introduced battery while it's the same size and kind of works but if you have your old batteries put into this new camera you're going to disable quite a few of the great features so you're kind of forced to buy again more batteries the switching between still and video is a lot easier now there's a new button where you can actually flick it and switch between still and video which i actually like i just don't like where the location of it but again we'll get used to that and also they relocated the on off switch button all in all i think it's a really great camera and i think the new features are worth the upgrade for me the pre-continuous shooting and that now i can shoot in electronic shutters those two alone makes the switch really easy and highly recommended. I'll put a link in the corner up here about my Fuji GFX 100 S2 that I did and in here about my Canon 200 to 800 millimeter zoom lens. There'll be a speaker in the middle if you'd like to subscribe and I hope to see you again.